What is up everyone and welcome to the Upper 90 YouTube Soccer Channel where we talk about soccer, aka football. Today we're diving deeper into the group of death, the group we've really been looking forward to and seeing who can come out of this group. So stick around as we talk about this. For those that know who I am, my name is Michael Forstner. I love talking about soccer, I love talking about Chelsea, but this video we're talking about the group of death, Group F. So as you know, this may be the hardest group in the entire tournament. We have Germany, we have Portugal, we have France, and then Hungary. But those first three teams are such major teams in this tournament that any one of them could actually win this tournament and it's a shame that all three had to be in the same group. Now with that being said, three teams can still come out of this group but it may not happen just because depending on who goes rampant and who really loses out in all these matches. So let's first dive into the first team. The first team, we're going to start with Hungary just because they're the team that I don't see doing really well in this group and it's a real shame because this team overall is a fairly decent team and if they were in different groups I think they would actually see themselves making it to the knockout stage but the fact that they're in this group of death I don't see them being France, I don't see them being Portugal and I don't see them being Germany and therefore I don't see them getting any points out of this tournament which again is a shame because Hungary is actually a pretty strong team but they just had the unlucky amount to be put into this group so therefore I'm not going to talk too much about them because I don't expect too much from them. Next on the group, we're going to be talking about the runners up from the last Euros and the last World Cup winners, and that is France. Now, France by themselves are probably the most likely to win this tournament. Their team itself, coming back from winning the World Cup and obviously making the finals back in 2016 and only losing to Portugal in stoppage time. They have something that's really on their list and that's to get revenge back on Portugal and luckily enough they're in the same group stage so I think that's going to play huge momentum into this. Now the whole team, there's really not one bad player in this whole squad. Now in between the sticks, Hugo Lloris, which I'm assuming will be captain again, he's such a phenomenal goalkeeper. He's another one of those goalkeepers that I'm going to put up there to win the Golden Glove Award in this term because I don't see France giving up too many goals. Their whole back line is pretty good all around. I can't see them really losing too many matches or again conceding too many goals. There may be one or two maybe from a set piece, but that's about it. I don't see too many open play goals against France. Now in the midfield, they obviously have the one and only Conte, which as we know can run and run and run and run all day long. Stop so many attacks, the counter attacks and everything. Really good with his footwork. The guy is just the energizer bunny doesn't stop playing and just makes the perfect decision each and every game. And because of that, that's going to allow Paul Pogba to really have a lot of open space, be more creative and really do what he wants to do because again, he has Conte back there that can really, you know, take some of the load off playing defensive work. So therefore, Pogba can move forward and again, do what he wants to do, score goals, put some crosses in, some fancy footwork, all that. And again, it's going to be fun watching him play. And then obviously up top, I think Antonio Griezmann is going to again have another solid tournament. Now he didn't do too well in the last World Cup. I think overall he was so-so. I wouldn't say he was amazing, but he wasn't terrible. But in the last Euros, he was just phenomenal. And I think this is going to be another tournament for him to really shine. And actually, I think he's going to be the one that's going to win the Golden Boot this tournament. I think he's going to be one of the star players overall because... He's getting to that point where he's really matured from the last couple of tournaments. He's been playing so well at Barcelona. He's obviously enjoyed playing with France. And I think he's going to be one of the shining stars. Now, <clears throat> we obviously still have to talk about one of the other players, and that's Mbappe. I mean, you can't talk about France without not talking about this amazing player who most likely will go down as one of the best players in this generation because he's already won a World Cup. He's done so well at PSG. Yes, they haven't won the Champions League, but overall, the skills that this guy has and being so young, he is just on another level when it comes to his ability. And yes, I think he's going to be one of the outstanding players, but I don't see him scoring as many goals as Antonio Griezmann, and that's why I think Griezmann is going to be one of the top players in this tournament. And again, I see France doing fairly well in this group. Next on the list, we have 
Portugal. And as we know, they are the current champions in the Euros. Now, they did get a little bit lucky last time coming around because they actually finished third in their group. They drew each and every match and then barely scraped by to get to the final. And when they got to the final, they won by a goal by Edar, who hasn't scored a goal for Portugal. And therefore, it's just more mind-boggling that they were able to win that tournament. And I'm not sure how lucky they'll be this time around. Now, obviously, they have their main guy, Ronaldo, who actually hasn't shined too well in the last couple of tournaments. He's never won the Golden Boot Award, and I think that's one thing he really still wants to win in one of these tournaments. And I think that's really going to drive him forward to playing really well. And I think this may be his last Euros. Hard to say. I mean, Ronaldo's one of those guys that is a machine that can keep playing, but I want to say... After this, this will be his last one, and I think next summer is going to be his last World Cup. And therefore, I think he wants to go on a high note or as close as possible, and he's going to give it his all. Now, Portugal, same thing with France. They are well-rounded all over the place. Goalkeeper Patricio from Wolves, I believe, will be the starting goalkeeper for this side. And he, again, is another phenomenal goalkeeper that you can really trust in. In the back, they have Ruben Diaz, which, as we know, had one of the best seasons in the Premier League. He's going to be paired with Pepe, which, again, those two guys, I just don't see them lending up too many goals as well. They're both so intelligent, so strong on and off the ball and make such great passes that they're going to be really hard to break down. Now, obviously, in the midfield, they have so many great players there, too. It's hard to say who will start. One of the players I think is really going to shine is Bernardo Silva. Now, I know he hasn't had the best season with Manchester City, but overall, he's definitely a guy that can play really well and step up. Now, obviously, there's a few other players on this Portugal side that I'm really looking forward to as well. I think Felix is going to be another shining youngster in this group. I'm not sure how much playing time he will get, but again, he's going to be a lot of fun when he does get his time. But overall, I think they're going to be charged or led by Ronaldo. So as long as he can have a solid tournament, I think they're going to go fairly far in this tournament as well. And last on the list is Deutschland. Now, as you may or may not know, I'm a huge fan of Germany. I love every single player that plays for this team. I love the manager, even though he's going to be out after this tournament. And Bayern Munich's coach or manager that was there will be taking his place. So this is Lowe's last time managing Germany. And I think that may help them quite a bit because... They've been playing pretty poorly as of lately, but the fact that they know this is his last hurrah, they may push forward just a little bit because he did bring back two older veteran players, that being Hummels and Muller. Now, those two guys by themselves should really help change the locker room because their presence, their knowledge, winning the World Cup, so they know what it takes to get to that final stage and win should really help out. Now, along with that, this team, again, is stacked everywhere. All three teams in this group, minus Hungary, are just well-rounded teams. Now, in the net, I believe they're going to go with Emmanuel Neuer, even though that Leno and all their other goalkeepers are just, just amazing. It's hard to believe how many great goalkeepers Germany pumps out each and every season, but obviously Neuer is the, going to be the starting guy. His footwork, his passing, the way he moves on the pitch is none other like, you've never seen anyone do it before, and it's just amazing watching him play. Then in defense, again, I think Hummels is going to be one of the starting guys back there. Rudiger most likely will be starting with him. I'm really looking forward to him pairing with Hummels. Again, it may switch it up just a little bit, but I think overall those guys are going to be really good and solid for Germany. In the back, I'm not too sure if Kimmich is going to be playing right back. I think he may be in the midfield, but either way... He's definitely in the starting 11. Another great player from Bayern Munich that has had a phenomenal season. One, the player that can really step up for this team. And again, I'm looking forward to watching him play. Now, obviously, in the midfield, we're going to see Tony Kroos as well. One of the best passers I've seen in a long time. Obviously, there's been other midfielders throughout this time that have played with him or against him. But for Germany in general, Tony Kroos is one of those guys that's calm, cool, collective all the time. Makes easy passes. Doesn't really try to challenge the ball too often, but when he does, he still connects those passes and therefore gets to the players that he needs to. So he's one of those guys you can really rely on when you give the ball to him that he won't lose possession. And I think that's going to be really key to this group stage just because being so close in all levels, Portugal, Germany, and France, 
that if you make any small mistakes, the other teams can really capitalize that. And I think that's where Tony Cruz is gonna play a huge role in this. Now, obviously some of the other players I'm looking forward to is Kai Havert. Again, thankfully for him, Chelsea won the Champions League. And I think he's gonna take that momentum and keep pushing forward. He is a very young player, but overall, I think he's a solid player. He's one of those players that drifts in and out quite a bit, but overall, when he's on, he is phenomenal. His passing, his speed, his shooting is one of a kind, and therefore, again, I'm looking forward to him playing. And the last guy, another Chelsea player, Timo Werner. Now, Werner, yes, he's had his issues with scoring, but overall, contributing to goals, he's one of the top players, and even at Chelsea, he did fairly well minus not scoring goals and I think if he can find his confidence and start scoring quite a bit that could be huge for Germany because if Timo Werner can start finding his old ability to score goals they're going to be unstoppable because with his speed his pace his finishing prior to Chelsea was one of the best finishers for a forward and so again if he can start finding the back in that they're going to be a huge threat for this whole tournament for any team that they face. Predictions. Um, it's kind of difficult to pick who is going to top this group, but I think I'm going to go with the safe bet and say it's going to be France. Now, again, I think France overall is just a little bit better than Portugal and Germany, but again, that team can still struggle against those two other teams. Now, coming in second, man, it, it's hard to say because I want to go with Germany, but I think Portugal is just slightly better as well. But I think I'm going to go with Germany taking second in this group because I do like a lot of the players. Obviously, there's a few Chelsea players in this squad. But overall, I think Germany can just grind out games and actually beat Portugal and therefore make it for the second place. And I actually think Portugal will make it out of this group too. I think this is going to be one of the groups where three teams do make it out because I think Portugal can maybe draw a game against France or Germany and then also beat Hungary and therefore get four points which should be enough to see them make it out to the knockout stage. So again, I think France, Germany, and Portugal will make it out of this group. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate that. And even comment down below who you think is going to be coming out of this group. Again, I think it's going to be France, Germany, and Portugal. Let me know what you think, who's coming out of this group, and who's even topping the group. So that's all I have for you today. We'll see you next time.